Alrighty, uh, so today's topic, co-dominance, okay? And uh, I'll find out I'll tell you that for co-dominance, so if you, here, what I always think about when I think about this is I think of, okay, if you were co-champions, right, of the Big Ten with another team, so meaning, you know, Michigan State and Wisconsin were co-champions, means they had the same um, record, right? And so what ends up happening with co-dominance is uh, both uh, phenotypes, okay, are co-dominant to each other. And the biggest thing that comes up, quite frankly, with co-dominance, okay, is our blood system, okay? So we have what is referred to or called an ABO uh, co-dominant blood system. And here's what that means, okay? So type A, meaning antigens A, right, is regular dominant over O. So A is dominant to O, just straight up dominant, okay? So what ends up happening is, you know, of course, AA gives A blood, right? But AO, the A masks the O, therefore these people end up with type A blood. We're going to make a chart about this in a second. And then B is also dominant to O as well, okay? So a person could have type B, B right? Maybe they got a B from each parent, right? That could be the person's genotype. Or the person could have gotten a B from one parent, type O from the other. The B masks the O. And so when that person goes to the doctor and they ask them what type of blood they have, they have type B. Now, that means that O is recessive. So what does that mean? Well, just like everything we talked about just now, right? Or for the last couple of weeks for the most part, We've talked about things where recessive requires two alleles, and that is the case here. In order to have type O blood, you had to receive one allele from mom and one allele from dad. So in this case, the individual has type O blood, and that's the way we can get it, okay? But here's the kicker. Type A blood and type B blood are co-dominant with regards to each other. So maybe some of you guys who are watching or some of you amongst us have um, type AB blood, okay? So you have type AB, literally like both letters. Well, what happens in this instance is you got an A from one parent for your genotype and B from the other and these things co-dominated. Meaning, the A didn't mask the B, the B did not mask the A. All right? So, to work in your packets for a minute, all right, you see uh, a part right here, it says possible genotypes, possible phenotypes. So, possible genotypes, possible phenotypes. Let's go over this one more time. I think hopefully you just got it, but in your packet, we're going to fill in that first thing. All right, so phenotypes. That's like what you tell the doctor, all right? So there are four different types of blood. You could be type A. Doc, I have type A blood. We'll talk about why you usually say A positive or A negative in a minute, all right? You could also have type B blood. You could have type O blood, or you can have type AB blood, okay? So, in order to have type A blood, okay, remember, you're going to get an allele from each parent for blood type. So, in order to have type A blood, you have to get at least one A from both parent, from each parent, from one of your parents, now, because A is dominant to O, however, you could have had AA and they were just A and A and that was type A. Or you could have had type A dominating over O, having type A blood. Type B, on the other hand, type B could have gotten a B from one parent, could have gotten another B from another parent, you'd have type B blood. 
type B from one parent, type O from the second parent, you'd still have type B because B is dominant to O. The only way to have type O blood is to get an O from both parents. And likewise, in order to be type AB blood, you would have had to get an A and a B. Now, we always say it's AB, okay? Um, that's how we pronounce it. But technically, you, know, you got a B and an A, you could have said that. All right, now. There's a couple other things I want to go over real quick. This type O blood person is actually a really special person. You see, by type O, what we mean is their blood is absent of the antigens. And so what ends up happening is what's cool about type O people is because they are absent of that, they can give their blood to any individual. And so as such, type O people, we give them a name. We call them universal donors. So if you are a universal donor, you're a type O person, and more specifically O negative, you are going to be somebody who the Red Cross is going to, you know, want to have a relationship with. Now, type AB blood people, okay, they cannot give to anybody. In fact, they can only give to other AB people, but they do have something that makes them really unique and really cool and special. So, they can only give to type AB people. However, because they have A antigens in their blood, they can receive blood from a type A person. And because they have type B blood antigens, they can get blood from a B. And they can even get blood from a type O. So as such, what do we call them? We refer to these individuals as being universal recipients. Okay. Um, now, on your pages right now, what I want to do is I want you actually to cross off and put an X through MN. We're not going to talk about that. And put a, a, a line through hemoglobin. MN is another blood system that I just don't want to spend a lot of time with right now. Okay. And hemoglobin is a really important uh, substance, a really important molecule uh, in the regard that it is a carrier of oxygen for your blood. And so uh, it's a complex, it's a protein that is found within your, your red blood cells, okay? So we're going to flip to the back right now, okay, of the page for codominance. And let's talk about the last thing having to do with bloodstream, and it's not codominant. I just want to make sure we talk about it for a second, okay? And it's called RH factor. So what ends up happening with RH factor, okay, so RH factor, is that the body, um, it says right here, okay, another system of type of blood is based on the presence or absence of another protein, and that's called RH, okay? And for the most part, it doesn't really impact you too much, okay? But the thing about RH factor, is that it's completely normal dominant. So completely normal dominant. Where positive equals the presence of the protein and negative equals no protein. Okay? And so what ends up happening is the protein is present if you have plus, negative if you have none. So. In order to have phenotype, okay, and there's going to be two phenotypes here. You could be positive for Rh factor or you can be negative. Well, here are the possible genotypes. Remember, you're going to get two alleles from each parent. So to be positive for phenotype, you'd have had to get a positive from one parent or a positive from the other. And you'd be positive, positive, gives you positive. Now, the other way is the heterozygous. You get a positive for Rh factor from one parent. You get a negative. Well, the positive masks the negative, making you positive. So this is just like being tall or having purple flower, um, you know, purple flowers, they're dominant. Now, when we talked about pea plants, we said they were short, right? We had to have two little teas. Or when it was, you know, green peas, right? Those were little y, little y, because that was the recessive for the dominant yellow. Now, in this case, in order to be negative for RH factor, you have to have a negative and a negative. And you know what? It doesn't really necessarily come up all that often, 
okay? But one place that it does come up, I'll fly it out to you real quick, is when uh, you choose to have children, all right? So at some point, okay, what ends up happening is, right, you may choose to, to have children. And women have to be very mindful of our age factor during pregnancy, and here's why. Sometimes their baby can have a different RH factor, right, than they do. So for example, let's say the woman is positive, but she's heter and she's heterozygous or homozygous dominant, right? But her baby ends up devoid of the protein. And so what she has to do is she has to go undergo some testing just to see if those types of things are true. She uh, usually, if she needs to take positive or take protein, uh, she'll do something with some type of supplement, that kind of thing. Or maybe her body is just able to react to it. But long story short, RH factor. So that was AD blood system, RH factor. And now let's do a couple of problems. Alrighty, now quickly, I'd like to go through some examples and I can't have this be too long. I think there's a 15 minute limit on my videos. So if we had an individual who is type A blood and their genotype was AA crossed with type B blood person, BB, here is what it would say. The, um, the problem, this is on page 17 in your, or no, it's page 18 in your packets, says give me the, the phenotypes. So here we go. So two times two gives me a Punnett square of four. Okay, this individual put it right there, 50% of the time left A, 50% of the time the right A. Across the top, 50% of the time the left B, 50% of the time the right B. So it would be A, B, A, B, A, B, and A, B. And so the phenotypes of this, every organism or any offspring they had, would all have A, B blood. I should put type A, B blood, okay? Here on the other hand, what would end up happening is this. You have a person who's type A, but they're AO for their genotype, type B with BB. So what ends up happening? 50% of the time get that A, 50% of the time get that O. Then across the top, 50% of the time that B, 50% of the time this B. So AB, AB, BO, and BO. So what ends up happening with this individual is we have two type a, B for every two type B. And the reason I say B is because remember, B dominates over O. So some of B O genotype, right, ends up having phenotype type B blood. Okay? So here we go. Type O, it's the only way to be type O because it's regular recessive. Type AB, this is the co-dominant one. So what ends up happening is this. We end up having an O and an O, 50%, 50%. 50% of the time an A, 50% of the time a B. So we get AO, we get BO. AO, BO. So this person has two type A children, this one and this one, and two type B children, if they had four, all right? And those are percentages or probabilities. Now, this might not always happen. And they might have four kids and you might not get this two to two, but if they had eight or 12 or 16, eventually those things would even out and you'd end up with 16 kids, you'd end up with eight of them and eight of them approximately. Last one here, okay? AO times OO. So it ends up happening here, 50% of the time type A, 50% of the time type O, 50% of the time O, 50% of the time O. Type A person, type O person. So we get AO, AO, OO, OO. So 50, uh, this person's gonna have a type A kid, two types, these two, and two type O. And remember, this is the only way to have type O because it is true recessive. I would like you now to complete all the problems on page 18 and go through it all and then you must explain them for every single one. Can they have these types of children? And explain using Punnett squares, okay? Um, there you go. So good luck with that and you're gonna use Schoology to check it when you are done.